Good afternoon. I'm Sarah Lavender and I'm the Senior Occupational Therapist at the Wisdom Hospice, which is based in North Kent in England. The aims of my presentation are to discuss the pain of isolation in relation to loss of function when people living with MND ALS are using wheelchairs, riser recliner armchairs and hospital beds. I'm also going to discuss holistic assessments to include how to help people maintain physical contact with their loved ones and to explore how equipment can resolve the pain of isolation. Palliative care occupational therapists are experts in improving a sense of well-being and quality of life in end-of-life care for individuals and carers in psychological, social, spiritual and physical distress. The OT focus is on living well, addressing meaningful activities of daily living and maintaining independence, therefore reducing the care needed by others. OTs are skilled in providing a range of strategies to prevent unnecessary, inappropriate or undesired admission to hospital and are essential in enabling timely and successful discharge home from a hospice or hospital setting. OTs are key members of the hospice multidisciplinary team, providing a unique and essential perspective of person's functional ability, assisting in treatment and future care planning. The functional pain of isolation includes many things. The activities of daily living. When someone is unable to carry out an activity, how does that make them feel? For example, Jacqueline, a young mum I've got with MND, is unable to take her four-year-old to school. How does that make her feel? Hobbies. Usually a busy person, but now. Alan is a man I've got who used to repair motorbikes, build extensions, and his day was very busy. Now he spends all day in an electric wheelchair or riser recliner armchair watching other people. Holidays. Will there be enough rails, level access to the property? Stephen and his family, they took suction grab rails on their safari holiday to enable Stephen to maintain his independence rather than rely on a carer. And families, used to always cook for the family, but now she has to watch. Marion used to do all the cooking, but is now fed through a peg tube. So her husband cooks a meal for one and there's no pleasure at mealtimes anymore. In holistic assessments, the OT uses a rehabilitative approach, including activity and environmental analysis, lifestyle and management strategies, which are appropriate to the end of life care, and adaptation of techniques and the care environment. The OT will also organize groups to enable self-management of symptoms in conjunction with medical treatments to improve effectiveness and to regain a sense of self-control. The OT reduces their pain of isolation by adapting their environment as appropriate, by setting realistic goals to enable a positive outcome and provide a sense of achievement. The OT will actively listen and give them quality time. Total pain for somebody, whether it's physical, psychological or spiritual, presents in many forms. Being disabled often limits your horizon and increases your pain of isolation. So if you have to sit in a wheelchair, if you have to use a riser recliner armchair, if doing anything is too much effort, so you just don't bother. If the NHS in England give you a hospital bed, it's a single, single bed, not a double one. And if you have reduced communication skills, texts and emails can help, but they don't have the emotion. 
I will now demonstrate some equipment solutions to isolation. Instead of a manual wheelchair, how about an electric mobility scooter, which will enable the carer to walk alongside the person using the mobility scooter, rather than pushing from behind, where conversation is more difficult. Our local branch of the MND Association financially supports us to provide scooters for our patients, and the benefit is enormous, although I haven't heard of any speeding tickets just yet. As an alternative to the NHS single electric bed, suggest a double electric bed with separate motors to enable a couple to sleep together. Nikki, my lady with MND, and her husband have a double electric bed. She said, MND ALS has taken so much from me, but not my ability to sleep with my husband or where I can cuddle my children. This enabled Nikki to maintain physical contact with her loved ones, which improved her quality of life. Another area to consider is seating. A rise of recliner armchair, seen here on the left, does not facilitate the person having a cuddle or reading stories to grandchildren. So we've investigated a two-seater rise of recliner armchair starting with a chair made for a bariatric patient of 40 stone. As you can see, three of us managed to get on it. This chair did not provide adequate support for transfers as there was no central armrest. But by using it in our day hospice, this demonstrated how popular a cuddle really was. This has helped us to develop a two-seater riser recliner armchair with separate motors and with arms in the centre. I will now demonstrate this two-seater chair with a DVD made at the Wisdom Hospice and my thanks go to Pauline and her family for permission to show it. Now if I press this button. My name is Sarah Lavender and I've been working as an occupational therapist for over 20 years. I'm currently employed by Medway Community Healthcare, Rochester, Kent, working at the Wisdom Hospice. Throughout my life, it has become apparent to me that we all need a cuddle. When a person becomes dependent upon an electric riser recliner armchair for transfers or a wheelchair for mobility, they can become isolated from physical contact as their partner or grandchildren are unable to sit next to them for a cuddle, especially when reading stories or watching TV. So how do we overcome this? This challenge was given to the Tanner Trust in 2007 by the Mid-Kent branch of the Motor Neurone Disease Association to develop a two-seater riser recliner armchair. The Tanner Trust is a charitable trust established to assist in the development, user evaluation and introduction of equipment to the disabled. The Motor Neurone Disease Association in England currently loans every patient a single-seater riser recliner free of charge when it is required following an assessment by the occupational therapist and some of these people living with motor neurone disease would have benefited from a two-seater riser recliner. A father with MND could no longer cuddle his children or wife when sitting on his riser recliner, which is an important part of his family life. So his wish was to have a two-seater riser recliner which looked like a normal sofa. During the development process of this chair, Wildon Rehab, a local supplier of disabled equipment in Kent, was contacted and their knowledge enabled the final product to be developed. This two-seater riser recliner or cuddle seat as it has become locally known, has separate motors for each side of the chair to allow individual seating positions, armrests on the inside of each chair which raise and lower to facilitate cuddles or sideways transfers these armrests would be in the up position when transferring in or out of the chair for transportation the chair comes in full sections so it can easily be moved it requires a double 13 amp socket this cuddle seat allows physical contact which enhances the quality of life of its user it enables family roles to continue for as long as possible 
It would have benefited a mother living with MND who told me the only place I can now read stories to my young children is lying in bed as they cannot sit next to me comfortably on my single riser recliner for a cuddle. It is vital to also consider fatigue management in all activities of daily living and provide appropriate equipment. Ian is capable of walking upstairs, but it's so exhausting for him that he then has to sit down and recover. The OT may organise a stair lift, whether this is rented or purchased, to enable Ian to save his energy for pleasurable activities, i.e. spending time with his family to prevent isolation. Stephen was loaned a mobility scooter so he could continue walking his dog and going to the pub with his colleagues from work. This prevented him from being isolated from his friends and giving him a role and purpose within the family since giving up work. Here are some thoughts from my patients which they've asked me to share with you. Time. I'm now discovering I have to turn things down at work. I cannot do as much, so life is becoming narrower. Each thing I do takes longer and requires more effort, from the simplest activity like cleaning my teeth, so I become tired and have to rest in the afternoon. My time gets very full, even though I do less. Space. There are so many losses, big and small. For instance, I'm less inclined now to go out for any trivial reasons, like a visit to the coffee shop. My world is getting smaller in that way. Now, I only go out for medical appointments. And relationships. Meal times used to be a time we shared together, a time to discuss the day's events, the news, and laugh together. Now Stephen's no longer able to talk to me so we just sit in silence and eat once I have cut up his food. Don't ask me. I'm okay when I talk about my husband, but when I talk about me, I can look after anyone else, but when it comes to things for me, I just like to keep going. That's what I find difficult. When people say, how are you? That is just the wrong thing to say. How is he I can cope with? But if you ask, how are you? Suddenly I think, oh, I'm not well. It is vital that all professionals think outside of the box and use statutory services funded by health and social services for standard equipment. Then investigate local funding from MMNDA or their previous employer for funding to purchase equipment to prevent isolation, for example, the double electric bed. Also, adapt existing products to solve functional difficulties. The suction grab rails have been used to move panes of glass for years, and we now use them on flat bathroom tiles to maintain independence following an assessment. And finally, what is their world with MND ALS? Looking out to sea all alone or struggling on their own? In my opinion, every human being deserves a cuddle and physical contact from their loved ones. So why should a person living with MND ALS be any different? It is important to carry out a holistic assessment where the psychological, social and spiritual needs are as important as their physical needs and the appropriate equipment is provided to facilitate physical contact. So please consider cuddles in all of your assessments because they are so important. And on the table at the back there is a leaflet for you to take home to remember that your patients need cuddles. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. 
So, questions from the floor for Sarah? Yeah, okay, I've got one on the, my left hand side. Okay. Any questions? Okay, we've one over here. Yeah. Um, hi. Um, you, these uh, solutions are valid for the early stages of the um, disease because after a while, if you have to put him or to the bed or put him to the um, chair, and this chair and the bed isn't okay for that. Kind of the the things. double electric bed and the um, double rise recliner is okay for hoisting. So you could use either a mobile hoist or an overhead gantry hoist. So the bed splits. The the double electric bed is two single beds. Okay. And pushed together to make a double, with separate motors. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything further? Okay, thank you again, Sarah, for sort of quite a fascinating presentation. Thank you. <clears throat>